Namaste, everybody. Today we have with us Dr. Ragini Sharma, who's a close associate of Infinity Foundation. She's going to talk to us about how caste is being weaponized in Canada. But before we do that and get into the subject, I'd like Ragini ji to talk a little bit about herself and uh, give us an introduction. Thank you. Ragini ji, welcome. <laughs> Namaste, Vijaya. It's such a pleasure to uh, be with you in this interview. You know, I've known Rajiv Ji since um, about 2012 when I stumbled into his work uh, when I was doing my PhD at York University. And literally, he changed the course of my life and my studies. Um, and I was struggling so much with uh, this whole uh, colonization of uh, the work on yoga in the academia and I was I, I just wanted to drop out and once I read being different uh, I I just the penny dropped and I felt so much at home I had the tools the language to confront um, uh, and write about what was wrong with academic uh, presentation of, of yoga and so it changed my life and then of course I met Rajiv Ji and uh, he took me on and he was a mentor to me and now he's a friend and uh, I deeply honor and respect him. And uh, actually I wanted to do this segment because uh, with the cast thing coming, I, I just found that the Snakes in the Ganga book was uh, so amazing in helping me understand what was happening uh, and to put it in context. Uh, that it was part of a systemic approach um, and not just something that had just happened. So it really helped me see the pattern um, which Rajiji has talked about and explained. So I wanted to do this and to give an example of uh, one little, uh, well, it's a big city <laughs> of us handling the caste situation. I don't know if listeners are aware of what's going on in Seattle where... Yeah passed uh, a resolution to make caste a protected category, the city of Seattle. And this is mm -hmm. happening all over the US. It's happening in all American universities where caste has become a protected category. And we have talked in a lot of vid videos about what happens when caste becomes a protected category because, mm -hmm. because it's going to be handled differently and especially apart from the existing uh, regulation that is there to protect people from all kinds of discrimination. So this is a dangerous turn for Hindus and Indians uh, that are in the diaspora. So please talk to us about what's going on in Canada. How is caste being weaponized? Well, I, I think the title of this uh, segment should be uh, Toronto is not Seattle. <laughs> They, they had the train started in Seattle and they thought they could just steamroll into, um, into Toronto. And they actually did manage to uh, get that train right into the station, but then it got stopped over there by just ordinary citizens like me and, and uh, local parents and community members who had really not had uh, much experience of doing anything so drastic, you know, advocacy. Uh, but we were uh, caught on a back foot because they had been working with the school board for over a, over a so year. So when you say, uh, Ragini, I'm going to interrupt you. When you say they, can you explain to us who the yes, they are? Yes, it's the Dalit activists. We've got, um, you know, Professor Jangam at Carlton. Apparently, he's been working for several decades to get to this point. And Equality Labs, you know, Tenmoza, uh, Sandar Raja. Raja. And um, and so these were and uh, the, you know they they have a local uh, uh, group that's called Sadan South Asian uh, Dalit Network, and uh, so they these were the the drivers. Uh, there's an article in the Toronto Star just last week, which goes into great details of how they made this happen, and they talk about how they approached the the TDSB trustee and how they convinced her that this is the way to go and bring this into TDSB. What is they're, TDSB? The Toronto District School Board. Yeah. Okay, so they're trying to get into the school board first. They apparently, uh, I guess they needed uh, someone from the inside to support them. So they approached this uh, trustee 
uh, the Sri Lankan trustee and won her over. It says in the Toronto Star article that that's the person they approached. And they met with all the trustees and the, and the staff and uh, very quietly, uh, without a peep. And they made sure that this information really didn't go out to the community. No one heard of it. It was even on the board, uh, uh, you know, it was brought to the board, but nobody knew. So the TDSB did not do uh, the consultation it usually does when a motion like this comes and a community is affected. They would consult with the community uh, because it's targeting the South Asian and the Caribbean community. But they never, uh, they never contacted us and say, hey, listen, we have a group that's talking about it. We'd like to invite you to come and speak to us about what is your point of view. There's always two sides to a story. But no, they just were completely brainwashed. You know, you did that show with the Shobha um, and you talked about how Equality Labs brainwashes people. And that's what's happened here. Uh, but before we go ahead, I wanted to play a little clip of Rajiv Ji talking about snakes in the Ganga book and how he, he envisions it being used as a toolkit. When you finish a book, it's like you've given birth to some being which, which has a life of its own. Because I take the book not as a sort of static thing, but it's, a, it's the culmination of a lot of research, a lot of thought to launch a movement. The book is a toolkit. Think of it like this is a Hindu toolkit to help us cope with the situation, the Kurukshetra that exists. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> he just always just gives you that, you know, that encouragement and that book that you have both written is such a treasure. That was a great clip. In fact, we wanted to put out this book so that it serves as a toolkit. Also wanted this book to make people understand what is the scholarship? What are the underlying mechanisms that puts out this poison that we see on the ground? So right, the I'm, glad, I'm glad you see it that way. But tell <laughs> us, tell us what exactly is Equality Labs mission in Canada with respect to the school board? Hmm. It's the same as you mentioned in Seattle, is to have caste declared as a protected category. So their goal was to begin with the Toronto District School Board, which is the largest school board in Canada. So their plan was that if they can get it into the largest school board in Canada, then um, they can then put it across the whole country. So that was their plan. So basically uh, they are looking, uh, the first few statements, that's kind of a weird statement to say that 84% of uh, Ontario South Asians live in the GTA area. Uh, they forgot to mention that, you know, we don't, uh, we represent about 2.3%, the Hindus represent 2.3% of Canada's population. So along with the South Asian, other South Asians, maybe five or 6%, but this 84%, you know, the way they write it as if, you know, we're a majority or something. But the main thing here is that they've identified the South Asian and Caribbean community. So this is something that is very interesting. And uh, they become, uh, they've sort of, they're targeting Hindus always, as we know from the historical, their videos and their talks, they're targeting Hindus, but they put in this South Asian to come across as if they're not targeting uh, Hindus. And they put in the Caribbean there, um, and the Caribbean is really, really has been very hurtful to the community because the Caribbean people, uh, the Hindus in the Caribbean were brought as indentured laborers. So they uh, actually uh, were working alongside slaves and had no human rights. So they did not have any caste system there in Caribbean and to paint these two communities um, as inherently bigoted because of their place of origin is what you see in front of you. So they talk about a rise in documented ca uh, caste-based discrimination, which is a completely false statement because there is no documentation of that. And they also talk about, this is a really interesting part uh, I'll uh, want to mention to you. They talk about last name, 
family occupation, diet and area as ways you can identify caste. Now we know how problematic that is. I think uh, you've talked about that in the book. Uh, now the most important uh, part of this, like we're not against, um, you know, uh, taking care of any situation, any oppression, like we're against caste oppression. The problem that we have with the wording of it is that it's singling out to communities by virtue of their place of origin religion. and the ethnicity. And religion. And religion. And actually. religion. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they don't mention it. It does say on various, uh, various all faiths, but we know it's about the Hindu faith. Um, now, I'll talk about the diet and thing later, but the implementation plan is the one that really bothered us. Uh, you know how you mentioned uh, this whole critical race um, theory mapped onto critical, critical caste theory is you can see how they only wanted Dalit activists to form the committee that would decide what they would do, the content that they would develop for the curriculum and the, the instruction for the professional development of staff. They only wanted the Dalit activists. And um, they they were then going to do all this work and bring it back to the committee and then uh, insert the caste oppression in their long-term plan. So what, what I want to show you, um, the people to understand is how an organization as large as TDSB, TDSB has, um, 250,000 students, a quarter million students. It has 60,000 staff. The trustees who were moving this motion, they were asked, are there any uh, reports of caste discrimination made to TDSB? And they said, no, they've never received a report. They've never received a complaint. What a percentage of discrimination complaints have to do with the caste system? Uh, through the chair, I, I have no idea. Um, in terms of caste-based oppression, have you have we witnessed any incidents um, in the Toronto District School Board um, that you may be able to enlighten us where students have been oppressed because of their caste or that you, you've heard through your constituents? I think part of the difficulty is that when it is identified. Um, I feel like a lot of students, what we've been hearing about is they don't know the proper means of how to report it. Um, CAS is another system that perpetuates anti-blackness. I also really appreciate the illustration of how this relates to anti-blackness. And, you know, there's obviously a very strong tie-in given the priority of work and the resources that we're putting into dismantling anti-black racism knowing the prevalence that it has in our system. And I, I very much see the connectedness of this work. Why does the motion shout out the voices of parents, students and staff? All voices and viewpoints needed to be represented, not only activists. Through the chair. I would like to hear from a broader range of parents, especially from South Asia. So you can see how, you know, in, in your book, uh, Vijaya, you've talked about how, uh, you know, facts don't come in the way of these people's decision-making. It's lived experience. They, they don't care about data. Uh, you know, they just going by two or three cases, they keep repeating those. And uh, they don't, when they asked about data, they said they have none. So One not only the, is that uh, lived lived experience; it's also um, the whole cancel culture where yes. none of you get a seat at the table. No, no seat at the table. And one of the things that really, really uh, upset me uh, and the other uh, was this whole thing about mapping the critical uh, caste theory onto the critical race theory, and including anti-black racism as caste. The originating in caste, in which the one of the black uh, trustees actually speaks to the fact that I'm really, really interested in hearing that caste 
uh, is anti-black. And our hearts just sank. I said, this is how they brainwashed and turned the black trustees against Hindus. And they, they uh, as I mentioned, you know, they've got the cancel culture. We can't be up at the table. There's no consultation because we're the oppressors and we need to be uh, canceled. We, we, we don't have to have a voice. We're supposed to be destroyed. And this is what they're, uh, this is what actually happened is the trustees refused to meet with the community. We made numerous calls and uh, they would not uh, agree to meet with us. Even today, even after the motion has been passed, the director of education still refuses to meet with us. So we can at least tell her, you know, you've passed this motion, it's gone to an Ontario Human Rights Commission. We still want to, to speak with you as to what our concerns are, because we think that a lot of misinformation has been fed to the committee and the staff, and she has flatly refused. So this is the level of brainwashing that they have accomplished. And it's really, really disturbing, I have to tell you that. Now, the objective is to have caste sensitivity training within the school system. That is one of the objectives. And the second objective is also make caste a protected category. By having this caste sensitivity training, Equality Lab stands to benefit thousands and thousands Absolutely. of dollars. Absolutely. They, that's the, so, and they don't tell them that, that. And this is something that we raise with them. And you can see in the in the caste oppression motion that they only wanted Dalit activists to be. So they're creating work for themselves. Yes, absolutely. Because the, the TDSB would have no idea how to decide which caste somebody has in any given situation, who's upper, who's higher, lower, and you know what the slur is, that they won't know anything. So they would have to hire them. Right. And there's no problem at all. Like you said, there were no complaints uh, in None. the prior year Zero. regarding caste. Mm -hmm. And so they've created a problem where there is no problem and they've exactly. created themselves a business opportunity yeah. and taxpayer money, Canadian taxpayer money is being spent on useless uh, caste sensitivity training when there is none. Um, and and this no is while the TDSB cut over 200 teachers, they have a huge uh, you, you know, backlash from parents saying that, you know, uh, you know the special ed and all the other important uh, stuff that needs to be in the club, they have been cut. And, um, and, 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 you know, the, there's a big concern about just basics being taught in the classroom, in terms of math, English, sciences, you know, they, they're taking money away, scarce resources, We're going on a wild goose chase. Uh, needle in a haystack, I call it. I mean, there is no caste oppression, but they, they in in fact, in a video that that we uh, that I had mentioned, we hear the the trustee say that you know it's like a research project for them. They want to find out if there is caste discrimination, and she ends by saying that if there isn't any caste discrimination. Uh, it's just education um, for the staff and the student. What's wrong with that? They they just refuse to acknowledge that they're actually spreading prejudice and hate towards a specific community uh, um, on on absolutely no basis. And dividing the community. In fact, Very uh, while, while Equality Labs has, is on the ground, uh, a few years back, uh, maybe 2019 or so, uh, Suraj Yengde, the Harvard Dalit yes. fellow, yes, uh, he had um, got some money from the Canadian Social Sciences and Human Rights it's in British Social Columbia. In, in British no, no, Columbia. Yeah, yeah the uh, Social Sciences SSHR, it's called, and Humanity sure. Research we Council sure, of Canada. For sure. Yeah, it's and an academic it a partnership. Yeah, it's a partnership between. Um, it's it's funded by this council. And it's mm -hmm. a partnership between Poetic Justice Foundation, which is a Khalistani foundation. Absolutely, yes. Suraj Yengde partnered with them to yep. write about, and the title of this uh, uh, paper was The Untold Stories of Canadian Dalits. Mm. So this has been in the motion for a while. So they have something to refer to uh, because now they have the Canadian Social Sciences Council uh, have a paper written by a Harvard 
fellow, no less, uh, talking about the untold Thanks. stories. Of yeah, yeah. Here is atrocity literature <laughs> being created uh, that they can refer back to. And then yeah. here come quality labs to say, hey, this is true. This is our lived experience, like you said. Yeah. We need to give cast sensitivity. So, to so what they managed to do out in BC with that after that grant and what you, you that you brought to my attention was they uh, they they had actually lodged a, a case in the Human Rights Tribunal of BC, and uh, it involved two sick men who uh, were physically assaulting um, a Hindu Dalit uh, by the name of Bhangu. His last name is. Uh, and uh, calling him a chamar. So this, uh, you know, uh, the educator the, uh, was a white woman, I think. Um, she's part French and part, part indigenous. I I'm sure she, she, you know, relied on the Poetic Justice Foundation to, to understand what was going on. And uh, they awarded $9,000, uh, which included the expenses of $3,000 or so, uh, for uh, this man being attacked physically and being called a chamar. So the interesting thing about that case is that it, it actually shows uh, that the tribunal was able to handle this case, this complaint under um, uh, place of origin ancestry. They were able to place it under that, and it did not require a separate protected category, which is what they had been asked. So, I mean, that was uh, something that they had were after, which they lost. That they've been asking for Human Rights Commission to add caste as a protected category alongside with with race, gender, and sexuality. But as we know, it's not facially neutral. Uh, and it's it's covered under under ancestry and place of origin. So that case showed that it did not need a protected category. And also, but at the same time, they sneaked in race. So can you imagine like two Sikh men beating up another Punjabi Indian man? So it could actually be a, a case of Hindu phobia too. It can be looked Absolutely. at. Absolutely. Yes, that's what I was saying. That is actually a case of Hindu phobia. But they've also brought in, in, in race. They are desperate to bring in race. And as you've talked about this whole critical caste and race theories, they're trying to bring in race. So uh, the, the, the person you know who educated, he, that person didn't understand what they were trying to get it done, is to insert race in there. But they did manage to get, get race in there. Uh, and the important thing, but the important thing is that it, it showed that it did not need a protected category, which is what they were trying to get at TDSP. So in one way, um, it, it you know it it's a good thing, but you know uh, it's terrible that they they got this uh, under race, and uh, so now it, they they've got their first ruling. On, on caste discrimination. Caste is being made equal to race, uh, and that is very dangerous. Very dangerous. There is mapping, mapping of, ca uh, of race to caste, and then caste back onto yeah. race in America. Ex and this is exactly what we were afraid of, is that this, uh, this person at the tribunal who educated had no idea what she was buying into. They convinced her and because she doesn't understand what the politics that these they, this is, these people are playing politics, you know, and trying to get this their whole theory, the race is very important to them because they want to show it's anti-black and all that, right? So they managed to get in, a, but you know, we we sent a statement uh, to BC. But the th thing is that they they have very powerful tools. They take things to court. And, um, you know, uh, and they didn't have a representation from the Hindu side to give the Hindu side of the story. They represented both sides together, one from Poetic Justice and somebody, uh, they managed both sides and they got that through for them. And in the whole thing, they never used the word Sikh. So they never mentioned Sikh, but uh, this man, the Hindu man went to the temple and was thrown out and all of that. So they got the Hindu in it. They got race in it. So, you know, it's very, very uh, troublesome how they are manipulating the system. And uh, this is what they want to do here. So going back to that motion, original motion, I want to go back to the TDSB. There was a motion that was passed on February 8th. 
and we made a big fuss about that if so this is what we did i just wanted to share with people because this can go to any any city now in toronto i mean in in canada uh, they've tested it here and i wanted to uh, use this opportunity to let people because in bc they're trying it in bc the i think in alberta also they have something happening at the university of i think simon fraser university um, so they're trying to do some things there. They had some talks about cast there. And uh, I know in the city of, uh, there's uh, in our own neighborhood, there's Peel, there's Durham, there's many other municipalities in the areas with school boards. They're approaching them all. So we are on alert for that. So we wanted to mention how we stopped their train at the station and didn't let them, uh, you know, uh, get into the school board. They, they were able to get in. They did, um, you know, win something, which I will come to the motion that actually passed. So when we saw this original motion, we only had a month. We were caught on back foot because they'd been working for a year, but we never heard about it. So we had only one month to do uh, whatever we could do to stop this from being approved. So we took the lead and, and we worked with our other organizations here, Hindu organizations. Um, we were able to contact the one trustee who had voted against that motion. And we were able to speak with the board chair through another contact. But literally we wrote letters, we made phone calls, we uh, sent them a three page, very detailed, thoroughly, a vetted letter uh, by a lawyer uh, to explain our concerns. And uh, we did a petition against, which we got 5,000 or 6,000 signatures within a week. Uh, we did some interviews uh, to get uh, some public support. We also did that four minute video, which is really, really educational, which we sent to them. I think that was a, a very powerful video. And we, uh, on the day of the, um, motion, we actually did a demonstration and we had some press coverage. So we did our advocacy to the best of our ability. Uh, as you know, the Hindu community didn't, most of them don't, didn't even know about this motion. Even if they were told, they didn't understand the importance of what was happening. You know, as you said, you know, we've had the book out, we had the book launch, we missed you. When you, uh, when Rajiv Ji was here, we missed you. I wanted to remind you about that, that we, we missed you very much. But, um, you know, we've done so much work to bring Rajiv's work to educate people about these kinds of things, but still the awareness is not there. And even for those people who did understand that is this, this inertia uh, or how to move into action, it's one thing to even understand something, but then what we need to take action, right? As so Rajiji was saying, is it's a toolkit to take action, right? So we were able to use the information and the knowledge that he, the explanations, to be able to catch the main points, like uh, you know the cast uh, critical cast theory was basically that's what they were doing. They were you know bringing that forward. And, and the school board loves it, you know, that's what they, they thrive on, all these theories. So, you know, we, we did all this and uh, we actually attended the board meeting um, and we were there till 11 p.m. The first one is, uh, you know, a little bit about our demonstration. You can take a photo of that later. We are here to express our deep anguish and pain at being singled out as bigoted uh, in, in the whole world, they couldn't find anybody else to pick except the South Asians. So now we made a huge protest. We have a petition that got f over 5,000 signatures in just a few days. We have a whole campaign of reaching out to each and every trustee to let them know how deeply hurt we are, that we are being targeted for no reason at all. There is n absolutely no evidence that caste is in the diaspora or in the community here in Canada. Uh, the second one is um, Professor Jungam. Uh, he gave a talk and he explains the Varna as a caste. Caste system uh, originated in South Asia thousands of years back. 
and caste uh, according to hindu religious texts and scriptures all human beings are born from the body of the caste body of the god or the creator the head is supposed to be the birth place of brahmins are the ones who are supposed to be the custodians of learning and knowledge the shoulders are the birth place of the kshatriyas the second rank caste is supposed to be the in charge of ruling and also the violence in society social order and rule vaishyas and merchants who are involved in mostly in mercantile work or trade and commerce and feet is associated with shudras with people who are supposed to be agriculture laborers and people who are dealing with the various kinds of artisanal activities or physical labor and in this caste hierarchy untouchables or dalits were born out of the caste system so they have no caste that's the reason why they are assigned all impure occupations or impure uh, activities to perform in society in this context in caste system the higher you are born in the more pure you are the lower you are born the more impure you are it is hard to overstate just how rigid and restrictive this kind of hierarchy can really be it's literally having your lifelong social status defined at birth and the last one uh, is the punjabi tv show in which uh, there's this sikh fellow um gurpreet singh and he is complaining to uh, the host of the show that upper caste people with names of sharma shukla jain were deciding and talking about the caste system though the people who are oppressed main ek youtube da incident mention karda ha utthe youtube te kafi ek famous page hai ga right wing supporters da hi keh lo oh te ode ch ek jehde host sige ayer ohna ne interview liya sharma ji da do sharma ji sige ohna ne gallan kiti jain saab diyan राजन Yeah. Uh, she claims to be a dalit uh, and saundar rajan is a name in tamil nadu that is used by brahmins i saw a a, a something on twitter the other day showing the head mm. priest of vishnu temple with the I last name i saw that Sandarajan. yes with saundar so rajan yeah, yeah it's a joke that they they talk about last names because last names um, usually don't mean anything so there was this initial motion you guys had around a month to come up with your advocacy and they changed the motion and this became the final motion this was the final motion so what you okay. see in the final motion is that the implementation plan was dropped so this is what i mean when we stopped their train at the station they couldn't get off it so what was the reason they gave for stopping the implementation plan our our advocacy they heard okay. us are they going to uh, totally cancel the implementation plan or are they going to get more information and then think about it and well then... they what they, they i mean it's a very uh, a very powerful move on their side so because the tdsb got cold feet and they were very nervous about all these dalit activists coming and writing the curriculum uh, imparting it to the students and all this professional development they got they were very nervous i spoke with the chair she clearly told me i'm very nervous about what she said was that this one off things because it doesn't fit into their uh strategic to strategic plan which is about anti black racism anti indigenous uh race the, the, those are the two areas that they really want to focus on is anti black and anti um indigenous because they th- those are the students that are struggling the most and there there's some middle east students also who don't do well these are the three groups of students and some maybe portuguese students that don't well these are the four groups of students that don't do well are uh, you know uh, according to their research have been done well but core group indigenous and black so that is why you see where every opportunity they get they were trying to put caste as race and every time jangam uh, there have been like 15 stories 
in, across Canada on this caste motion. And every time they will try to slip in race with caste because this is how they will be able to get through caste as an anti-Black. And caste will also thus get all the protections of exactly. race. Yeah. So they're trying to uh, slip in under anti-Black racism by calling caste as anti-Black. And we called it out. I actually wrote a separate letter talking about how disturbed I was that caste was being presented as anti-Black. And for the Black trustees and the Black staff to start having a prejudice against the Hindu community because we are, and it's a completely false. Uh, caste has nothing to do with race. With, with the black people. We have, we've never went to Africa to enslave them. We have no, nothing to do with, uh, with the, um, the slavery that they experienced. In fact, we ourselves were slaves. So, uh, so that they have dropped. So what, they, what their plan was is now is to send it to Ontario Human Rights Commission. So what their plan is now, they're gonna go to the Ontario Human Rights Commission. They're going to do submissions there and try to convince them to add caste as a category beside uh, the 17 categories that are already there, such as you know uh, race, gender, sexuality. The, the, so that of course they're not gonna get again because the BC has already ruled that uh, this matter can be dealt under ancestry and place of origin. So, but I think what they're hoping that, uh, that they will be able to convince the Ontario Human Rights Commission to make a public statement or put out a public statement condemning um, uh, caste discrimination so that they get recognition and are able to go back to the original plan of developing a curriculum. Yeah. So have you guys gone to the Human Rights Commission yes, and said yes, yes. This is about yes. Hinduphobia? So, this is about yes, Hindophobia. Yes. We, are, we are doing it um, and we're in the process. Uh, so this is the thing. Uh, we have written to the the OHRC, and we have uh, want ourselves to be stakeholders in this discussion. We're waiting to hear back. We don't know if the Toronto District School Board Director of Education has submitted that letter because it's been less than a month right now. It's just been a month. So I mean, they they've got a lot of things. It's, I don't think that this is a priority, but I'm sure the Dalit activists are going to put a lot of pressure on them to. So we don't know what the school board is going to send. We're waiting for disclosure, and then uh, I'm sure the Dalit uh, activists are going to go to the OARC and do their presentations. I don't know what else they're going to do, but we are also uh, putting ourselves in line to meet with the Ontario Human Rights Commission and make our own case and do a written submission, um, all that. It's interesting, Ragini, that, you know, the it is the time for victimhood and victims alone. We celebrate only victims these days, it seems like in the West. And Hindus have typically, traditionally never been victims. We Whether it's the exodus yeah. of Kashmir pundits uh, from Kashmir, whatever, wherever they go, or the Sindhis, we've just pulled ourselves up by the bootstrap and continued working and never assigned ourselves this victimhood status. And th that seems to be coming back and biting us, unfortunately, in this climate of uh, critical race theory, where uh, the yeah. victims get power. Well, you know, you made an important point. You know, uh, Hindus have this attitude key, you know, you know, mad dogs bark, you don't, you don't, you don't pay attention to it, you just keep going. And, you know, that's how we tend to look at it, you know, just ignore them. You know, I, I was sent uh, a, a document by the Ontario Human Rights Commission on um, uh, understanding discrimination based on creed. And uh, it's a lengthy document, 100 pages or something with lots of examples. And, you know, I, I don't have the figures right now, but it was like about 150 exam, uh, times Islam was mentioned, Muslims and Islam, because they they will go to Human Rights Commission Tribunal for every little thing, so whether it's hijab, whether it's halal, whether at workplace, being allowed to do your prayers, like they take cases there all the time. So there was like a mention of, of the Islam and Muslim 150 times. Then the Jewish... Uh, name was there about 75 times. 
and Hindus were there like 20 times or something, but that also in a very generalized, uh, I think there was 30, uh, generalized statement, no particular case, Sikhs, Hindus, Jains, Buddhists, they were just mentioned in passing as other uh, religions, but there were no cases. In fact, I, as far as I know, not a single case of Hindu phobia has been taken to the Human Rights Tri Tribunal in Ontario, not one. As far as I know, um, I may be I may be wrong, but definitely it's not something that the community uh, does. Um, uh, we have a tendency to look the other way and just ignore things and just go on. But definitely, it's it's a big failing on our part because this is now uh, what we're facing is that there's no recognition of Hindu phobia, and uh, you know we've had five temples attacked. We have. Um, you know, we have uh, a student run um, at OCAD. We have a, a, there's a Ontario College of Art, and um, there's a student association there. They had an um, um, uh, art exhibition on Hindu art, and they had advertised it. They had made posters. And the day before, two, two days before, uh, one of the other clubs showed a very anti Hindu, anti in their film. So they told them, don't show this film because it's got no context. It'll just create a lot of ill will towards Hindus and, and prejudice. And they said, no, 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 we just want to show it. We have a right to show it. And sure enough, the very next day, their posters had been slashed. Across them with green tape, it was written, uh, no Hindu nationalism is needed in Canada. So all their posters got destroyed and, and, and uh, you know, so this is the, uh, but, you know, uh, this is what happens is that um, this is academic, you know, Rajiji wrote that book on academic Hindu phobia. There's total in Toronto, in Canada, it's fierce. The hate that's been put out against Hindus is just incredible. So there is a huge amount of, of uh, Hindu phobia in Toronto and we need to take action on that. And I just wanted to share a little bit about what we're, you know, we're not organized. We're, we're just a grassroots few people coming together, uh, but at least we've started. We're very proud that uh, we were able to stop the implementation and uh, we have another opportunity to go to the OHRC and talk about Hindu phobia because that is what, the Dalits, what the activists are trying to do, as you saw at Fremont yesterday, they were down, they were very upset with the uh, Hindu phobia proclamation. And they were standing outside saying down with Hindu phobia, down with Hindu phobia. So they, they, they've called me a Hindu supremacist for bringing up the issue of Hindu phobia. So congratulations, uh, Ragini, for this, uh, <laughs> this first step and the first victory in a series yeah. of victories, we hope. And what can people do? One is to spread awareness uh, and to join your movement in fighting Hindu phobia and use weaponizing caste. What else can people do? I think we we could be, if people have yeah. legal services that they can provide. Yeah. This you is know, the time. It, I, I have to tell you, yeah. we need to take several cases to the human rights tribunal we have the cases but we need we need to hire lawyers we need money i have to tell you even finding a lawyer is not easy we uh we, we have been looking around but caste is a big unknown and you know in the legal community they don't usually feel comfortable handling something which they know nothing about there's a fear right so it's it's quite a job for us to even find lawyer but more important, I think we will be able to find lawyer. We do have a lawyer now, but uh, we have we have cases that we need to take. We are ready to proceed to the Human Rights Tribunal. I think we have a very strong case uh, to take the Human Rights uh, Tribunal about how Hindu religion is being targeted. I think we have a very, because uh, you know, their presentation on the caste is, uh, you know, Varna is caste, is, we know it's completely unfounded. 
the varna system is not cast we have enough we, okay, we yeah, have no, this is a good book we put out yeah 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 we will send that and book is, along to the definitely part of our submission we will so get a copy of that yes that we published. it's a nice yeah. small book it Bit acts cool. like a primer yeah. and the tool and it also gives people who want to genuinely understand uh, the difference between varna jati caste and the evolution through history um, mm -hmm. this would give you good insights into that because you know i was i was saying to vinod how uh, you know my husband and we talking to uh, uh, the other hindus like you know how the the catholic uh, it was mostly catholic but also anglican they destroyed the indigenous culture in in canada right there was a genocide of the indigenous people but if you read any um, any of the the literature um, that's written about the genocide of the indigenous people, they will mention the church, but they never take it back to the Bible. Similarly, when you know there are attacks by Islamic groups uh, on any uh, situation, uh, they will go to great lengths to distance the religion from the act and they say they are not Muslims. They do not represent. So I think the Canadian Charter of, of, of Rights and Freedoms protects every religion to practice peacefully and not be targeted. And this, this uh, motion that they've passed and the efforts of the Dalit uh, activists, clearly they keep bringing up this picture of the uh, of the varna system of the uh, brahma with all the arms and uh, you know pointing where it's coming from and adding the untouchable which not even in the varna system and you know continuously bringing up the hindu religion it's a social issue as it's explained in this book it's social issues of hierarchy of power structures that exist in all cultures so we are going to make a case that this attack on Hindu religion is not, should not be allowed according to the, uh, the freedom uh, that we are guaranteed to practice our religion. And it really truly has hurt the community. There's huge amount of hurt, embarrassment, you know, that this prejudice is being spread against I mean, uh, Rajiv Ji talks about the digestion of yoga, Ayurveda, all the contributions of the Hindu civilization to world civilization, it's monumental, but it's being all, uh, you know, the caste bomb, as Satish Sharma tries to well, says, the caste bomb is being dropped to, to completely wipe out every other positive thing that needs to be said. We are defined by caste, and this right. kind of thing is really bringing that up to defining the Hindu civilization and Hindus by caste. And we need to fight that because I have no problem dealing with, with the caste oppression as a social issue, which is the truth. But we are really, really upset that it's being equated to our religion and they plan to teach it to every child and process it. It, it, it really is hurtful. So thank you for your leadership in this effort <laughs> on, the, on the ground. And I think others can learn from your experience and be proactive because Hindus are always caught, uh, as you said, on the back foot. We are not, we are reactive. We don't know what to do. We are flummoxed. So Ragini, before we close, I want to ask you, what support have you got, say, from the High Commission of India? Uh, whether, you know, the diplomats, um, the Indian embassy, because they also support the so-called support the diaspora. And what uh, support have you got from religious institutions like temples and um, matas and, and gurus, if any, in this yeah. fight? You know, uh, when the temples were uh, attacked with the graffiti, they spoke up, the, you know, the Indian government spoke up, the council general spoke up uh, for the attacks on the Hindu temples. But when it came to this caste motion, there is absolutely no, no support at all. We've been completely on our own. And it's really disheartening because, uh, you know, one of the things that the trustee said in, in the committee meeting was that this huge influx of, of uh, immigrants constantly coming from India. 
and the messages that they're bringing this caste with them. I mean, this is a completely false, uh, you know, and to stigmatize immigrants. So this is something that the, uh, the Indian government should address because immigrants are still immig Indian citizens. You know, they're coming here as immigrants, but they're still holding Indian citizenship, right? And so they're not speaking up. Um, you know, we- This should be escalated. Up. You know, this should be yes. escalated in the diplomatic not, discussions. Not a, peep, not a peep out of them. Um, and uh, and then we approached the, the temple federation, the Hindu federation. We approached many temples. No, not one single temple came forward and sent a letter. At the same time, uh, we had uh, letters from the Islamic uh, federation, um, you know, the CCM, whatever they're called. And then there was a letter from the Six for Justice. So they people, you know, all those people sent the letters, 200 professors, uh, you know, the same ones, you know, they just push the button, the one that they sent to Seattle, they push the same button and out poured the same letters. They were inundated. I mean, we also had a campaign and we had same amount of letters. So we did a, a excellent campaign also. And our petition got 5,000 signatures. So you know, but it's been an incredible disappointment that the religious community, uh, I mean, they have been directly attacked. The Hindu dharma is being attacked, but we cannot get a single temple to write a letter. They are so scared. I even called the head of the federation and they saw one story in the newspaper. Oh, but they're saying this and this. I'm like, it's just again, it's just chalta hai. You know, this is okay. It's okay. We'll survive this. Inko bolne do. You know, this kind of attitude that, but they don't understand how serious this is for our children to go to school and be and be defined by caste and be ostracized and their identity, uh, you know, the loss that they feel that they, they cannot identify as Hindu anymore because this doesn't sound good at all. This is a very serious attack on our Hindu dharma and our culture and our tradition and our children. So we should fight back as we are. And I hope through your program and uh, people will come forward and, and we need donations to pay for uh, taking these matters to the Human Rights Tribunal and to the OHRC. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your story and uh, do let us know. Come back in six months and tell us the progress that you have made. Thank you so much for your time. It's such a delight to spend this hour with you, Vijaya. And thank you for all that you're doing. The book is exceptional and uh, you're doing a fantastic job. And of course, Rajiv Ji is our leader and he's our, our amazing inspiration to, to you know, give us the tools and how to speak and to be able to spot Hindu phobia whenever we see it, you know, and be able to speak in an articulate manner and present our, our, our views in a way that, that they can relate to and and you know it it requires a certain skill and knowledge to be able to present ourselves as articulate and reasonable at the same time you know so thank you for your time and and appreciate it very much thank you jay shri ram Everywhere South Asians go, particularly dominant caste Indian Hindus, they take caste. What is it that they do except, uh, you know, makes you know, make scriptures that enslave our people? I know that there are people who find meaning in books like the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads, but every act of Hindu scripture has done nothing but bring violence and pain. And the Nazis aren't Germans in fucking Europe. They're actually upper caste Indians. It's really time to disrupt every single space where Hindu nationalists come into play and it's every single person in the diaspora is culpable for the genocide that's happening right now in India because upper caste networks in the United States help to fund the rise of Hindu nationalism. That we also have a structural responsibility as South Asians to really come for our fucking Hindu nationalist relative. As they see on the line right here, is to come for your saffron auntie and uncle. Because those people are not casual fascists. 
past networks have allowed a genocide to occur on their watch and have been reformist roadblocks to institutions of policing and violence. The whole idea of Aryan race theory and swastika, in fact, they come from Hindu religious beliefs. So in this context, what you see is that, you know, he, the Hindu fascism and Nazism have a very interesting, you know, uh, co-relationship. Right? Celebration of Diwali is like asking an indigenous person to celebrate Columbus Day. Namaste is actually part of a caste discrimination in India. 